Okay, so say we're making a game that supports both keyboard input and a joystick input, so our player can choose which one he likes the best. In order to support that, we'd have to change our code to support both the new controller and also the keyboard. And then every time a new controller would come in, we'd have to change that code again and add some new conditions. Now that wouldn't be much of a problem if we only had one input in our game, so maybe just a jump button. Then we'd have to type in the code for the keyboard, for the controller, and then for every new kind of controller. That wouldn't be much of an issue. But the reality is that we have more than one just button, so we have a jump button, a action button, a fire button, and for every single of those buttons we'd have to duplicate our code once more. Now that isn't going to work out, so let's try again. Now imagine we have our player and he has multiple ways to send input. For the sake of simplicity, let's only keep the two most important to us. Imagine you're trying to get your player to jump, so over here you have your player, and these are its inputs, and we're trying to call the jump function. So if the spacebar is pressed, the jump is called. Same thing goes for the controller, if A is pressed, then jump is also called. Now eventually we're going to run into the same problem when every time we introduce a new controller we have to go back inside of our code and actually add these new connections. And when we introduce a new function then we'll have to write as many conditions as uh, the amount of controllers we have. So let's go back a bit. What if we created another layer in between the input and the game? This layer would be able to read inputs from all the different controllers and then convert it back into a single virtual input. In our code, we would then use that virtual input to call our function. This way, if we end up adding more controllers, we would only have to connect them to our new virtual input and not to every single piece of code using these inputs. This also gives us more control to what is sent to our game, so we could be blocking those input, we could be altering them while they're actually being sent. So let's go ahead and implement that new layer. We're done with theory, let's put this to action. Okay, so here we are in the engine. I've got my script folder and inside of it, I've created a input manager folder just for this video. I am going to right click on it, create, and I'm going to create a input manager script. Let's open it up inside of Mono Develop. Now, um, since this is going to be a input script, we want to be able to use it from pretty much anywhere. We don't really want this to have a reference somewhere. We don't really want this to be instantiated in our scene. So what we're going to do is actually remove the whole mono behavior part because we don't need that. Instead, we're going to make this a static class. So let's go ahead and write public static class input manager. This way we can now have static function that pretty much just checks um, is our input press. So in this case, we're going to have two types of input. One are the axis, which return a float value, so that's for the joystick. And the other one are pretty much just buttons, which return a bool value. Is it press or is it not press? Okay, so let's start with the easiest one. Let's go for the A button on my joystick. I'm going to declare a public static bool. And now we're going to find a name for this. Since, since I'm going to be naming all my buttons based on the uh, Xbox controller, I'm simply going to call this A button. Now you could be calling this pretty much whatever you want, but for my case, I want to name it the same as on the Xbox controller. So this is the A button, I'm going to have a B button, a X, and a Y button. I've came across people that would name this action button instead, maybe interaction button or uh, cancel button, all that kind of stuff also works. Okay, now as for the content of this function, we're going to need the input manager that Unity gives us. So they already give us an input manager, however it does not do everything we want, so that's why we're coding. Um, a additional layer on top of it. Now back in the engine, we're going to go ahead and go in Edit, Project Settings, Input. And now on the right in your inspector, you should have a list of every single inputs you have in your game. Um, now you're going to have a few by default. I already have some that I've made myself, but I'm going to reset them with you. So. Uh, you actually need to keep quite a lot of those because you need to use them for the menu and I think it also used them for a few other things so I think we need to keep the submit and the cancel. Now I'm simply going to reset my list to have the exact same list as you guys do. 
At the end of the episode, you're also going to learn how to reset and how to import or export your inputs. Okay, so this is what you should actually have right now, something of the sort. We are going to create new assets on top of that. They are called axes here, but they're really just, just input settings. So we are going to start by incrementing this size by one. So right now we have 18. Let's make sure we don't put that on zero so we don't lose what Unity uses. We'll go ahead and create a new one, so that's 19, and it is going to duplicate the last one, which was cancel in this case. Now, we want to be able to put a button in there. This is going to read um, both button, both axes, joystick. This is going to read pretty much everything, but we got to make sure that we tell him that we want to read a button here. In order to do that, let's just make sure down here under type that we have a key or mouse button, and also as for the axis, if this is a key or mouse button, we don't need to change the axis. It could be on pretty much whatever and it does not really matter. And now the rest of the settings are fine. Just make sure that the gravity for a button is a thousand and the insensitivity is also a thousand. Now as for the rest over here, as you can tell, we have a positive, negative, a alternate positive and also alternate positive button. We're going to remove all of these. And let's also make sure we change the name for something that we can actually um, recognize. So I'm going to name this A underscore button. Okay, so now this is where you would actually open up Google and you would look for your controller if you have any. So in my case, I have a Xbox 360 controller that I use for my Unity games. So I just went on Google, typed in Xbox 360. Unity and here we go it came out with this so this image right here is going to be my guide for pretty much uh, the rest of the video so now what I've did is I've created an input for the A button as you can tell on my image right here it says A is number zero so what I gotta write is joystick spacebar button spacebar zero and this is going to act as my A button input now now, since we want to have multiple buttons like this, since we want to have multiple way to actually input that, not only the joystick, we could go down here in alternate positive button and actually type in a key on the keyboard. Now, on the keyboard, I could be putting the A button as well. Um, you could also be putting J button, the G button, whatever you want. It's really up to you. This is going to be your A underscore button input. So just to not make this too confusing, this is going to be my A button on the keyboard as well. And this is pretty much what you need to do to have your input registered. So once you have this, you can go back inside of your code and we're going to go return a value. So it is really, really simple. All you got to do is inside of this static bool function, we are going to say input.getButton down and we're going to send in the string a underscore button like this and just like that this is going to return a ball as well and we're gonna get the result out of it now you're probably wondering why are we not using that line directly in our code and there is multiple answer to that um, having this extra layer this extra input manager layer we can actually block inputs say uh, globally in the script we could have a boolean up here a uh, private static boolean that would turn off everything. We could have multiple things affecting this. We could be uh, blocking this. We could be doing a input manager where you actually, you're able to change the key binds as well and say A buttons become something else and we can send in a string instead. We could be doing all that kind of good stuff. So having an extra layer where you can actually work on it that is not Unity based, that is not under the engine is actually going to be really useful in the end. So let's keep going. We have the A button. I'm simply going to duplicate this three times and I'll quickly do it in front of you. So we got the B button. We also got the X and the Y button. Let's already change the inputs even though we don't have these just yet. So X and Y like so. And then I go under edit, project settings, input, and we are simply going to create um, three more entries, so that's 22. Now I'll change the name here as well. So that's B button. The positive button on a keyboard is going to be small v. And it's joystick button one. 
Now I keep going this way, so that's X. Joystick button number two, X on the keyboard. And finally, the Y button. So joystick button number three and Y on the keyboard, just like this. Now all of these should actually be working already, but what if we want to have the joysticks? Because that's one of the most important part. You want to have the joysticks so you can actually move your character around. So we're going to go ahead and code the axis. What we're going to do is go up here, declare a public static float, and let's call this one main horizontal because you're only able to pull um, one axis at a time. So that's X or Y. You can't pull both of them at the same time. However, we could make a, uh, a public static vector 3 that would return that or vector 2 that would even be more optimized. So we're going to go ahead and just declare a main horizontal for now. Now as for the axis, we need to create some um, inputs as well. So let's go down here. I'm going to create two new inputs. So um, create two new entries in this list and the first one is going to be main horizontal and um, let's just make sure that this is for the joystick so I'm just going to type in J underscore main horizontal and let's do J underscore main vertical so we will need to split um, the joystick and the keyboard for this so let's go ahead and just uh, modify these two for an axis, you do not need any positive button. In fact, it's better that you remove them. So we're going to remove those two. And now as for the gravity, we will change it to 1. Let's put a dead zone of 0 0.2. So that's a dead zone on your actual joystick. If you don't go past 0 0.2, then the input is not registered. It's like, it's like if your joystick is a little bit loose, then um, you're not going to get any movement. So this is really useful to put and sensitivity is also on 1. Now once we have this completed we gotta go down here in, in uh, type and say that this is a joystick axis. Once you have the joystick axis checked then we need to actually look which axis are we moving. So right now I'm using this little image here and I know that I want to move on the X axis and it's also called X axis inside the unity right here. Now let's do the same exact thing for the Y axis. So I'm removing the positive buttons, changing the gravity to 1, changing the sensitivity to 1, and then changing the dead zone to 0 0.2. I am going to go down here, put this on joystick axis. Now as for the axis, we're using the Y axis. And there we go, we should now have the um, joystick input for the main horizontal. But if you remember, we're not really interested in having only the joystick input. We want to have both at the same time, so both the keyboard and the joystick. So we need to go back and actually create those keyboard. I will go ahead and expand my list to 26 and I will change the name of these two for K underscore main horizontal and finally K underscore main vertical. Now this way we can actually have um, a, the main horizontal and the main vertical for the keyboard as well that we can use a little bit later on. Now you're probably wondering which axis is this? If you open up the axis as you can tell there is no really there's not really any way to tell which axis this is and this is because we're going to be using buttons since we are on the keyboard. So we got to change the type for key or mouse button and then we gotta give it a positive and a negative button. Now as for those buttons I am going to be using A for negative and D for positive. So this is pretty much based on the WASD movement set. You could also go down there in the alternate uh, negative button and type in left and right for, for uh, positive. That actually counts as the arrow keys. So once we got this, let's go ahead and quickly do the main vertical. I'm going to go for S in negative, W in positive, down for negative alt, and finally up for negative, I mean positive alt. 
these are fine so these are buttons let's go ahead and change this or key or mouse button uh, let's also move the gravity to a thousand and the sensitivity to a thousand as well as for the dead zone we could be putting it on zero but it does not really matter because our number is going to go super fast because of the gravity and sensitivity okay so now back in our code what we're going to do is declare a float that we're going to call say r for result we're going to put it on 0.0, .0 at first and then we're going to do r plus equal input dot get axis and we're going to get the main horizontal axis for the joystick so j underscore main horizontal like so and just below that we're going to do r plus equal get axis keyboard main horizontal like so and now let's check is our input bigger than one because that's not supposed to be the case if you're only using one of those that's not supposed to be the case you're not supposed to be above one so uh, so you're using both your joystick and your keyboard at the same time then we're gonna get a result of two in this case and you don't necessarily want to have a vector of two when you actually use your input because it's going to create some weird behavior uh, and you're going to have to write code around it so we're going to clamp this while we return so basically what we got to do now is say return then we're going to get mathf.clamp and we're going to clamp r the minimum value you can get is minus one and the maximum is one like so and there we go this is now our horizontal axis we are going to duplicate this and actually do it for the vertical axis as well so we just change this for vertical like so and we should be pretty much good to go oh and sorry we gotta change this uh, function name for vertical as well so we could be trying those out individually but I actually feel like um, creating one function that wraps these two together so I'm going to go down here and say public static and I'm going to return a vector 3 because that's what I use the most I know this is actually only two inputs but I always use a vector 3 for uh, movement because it, this is pretty much what it takes for the character controller. So public static vector three, and I'm simply going to call this main joystick, which is also going to work for the keyboard as well. So, and inside of that function, I will simply hit return. I will return a new vector three that I'll make out of the other function that we just made. So new vector three, and as for the X, this is going to be main horizontal like so the y is going to be zero because in unity the y axis is uh, up and down the vertical axis and as for the z then that would be my actual vertical inputs like so so before i go any further and actually keep creating all of those inputs um, i'm going to go ahead and test it out i will simply just put some commas right here so those one are the axis and those one are the buttons let's go back inside of our game and I'm going to create a script just to test it out so you don't have to do this but we just gotta make sure that our code works right I will open this up this is called test input manager and inside of the update I will call my static uh, function from pretty much anywhere I don't need to have a input manager instantiated in the scene I can simply go right here and say if input manager dot a button so if I'm pressing a then I'm going to do a debug dot log and let's actually debug the main input so input manager dot main joystick like so so whenever we press the a button on either the keyboard or the joystick we should actually know the data of our uh, main joystick so we're gonna get some values out of the X and Y axis now let's go ahead and hit play I just need to fix the error so let's go see what's the error oh sorry gotta put some parentheses here okay so I'm going to hit play and in my console I should actually get nothing because I don't have a object with my test on it so I'm going to create a new empty game object drag the test input manager then hit play and let's actually take a look at the console so I'm moving my joystick around nothing happens because I have to actually hit A on the keyboard so say I hit A now 
as you can tell we get the direction I was pointing my joystick towards to. I'm actually playing with my joystick in my left hand, let me just open up the webcam. So here is my controller, if I hit A on the keyboard, as you can tell we get this input. Now you're going to see like minus 1 in X and that is because we also use the A button for the, ver the actual horizontal axis, so main horizontal. So that's a little bit normal that this happens because the inputs are actually like this on a keyboard while I'm pressing A since it is the same button. Now of course you don't want to be mapping your button on the same exact thing as me. Okay, but let's take a look with the actual controller. So I got my A button right here, I'm going to press it and as you can tell it says 0, 0, 0 because the axis of the joystick is not actually moving and I'm not clicking on anything on the keyboard. Now say we tilt this upward and we press A, we get 0, 0, minus 1. Now you would expect this to be 1, but um, I don't know if it's a bug, but it's just how it is mapped. We actually need to invert those axes. Not both of them, but because if you take a look and we actually tilt this towards the right, we press A, we get 1, 0, 0, which is actually what we're supposed to get. But the Y axis is invert, so we're going to go under Edit, project settings and over here where it says uh, joystick main vertical I'm just going to remove this we are going to hit invert right there now I'm going to hit play tilt my joystick upward and we actually get the good result so this is a bug you might actually have with the mapping of your own controller so if that's the case simply go in here and hit the invert button so if you are like me and you change project quite often, you don't really want to remake all of those input manually, so what you'd like to do is actually copy them over to somewhere else. Now the way you can do this is right click in your folder, go in show in explorer and then go under project settings. Under there you will find the input manager that you can simply copy and paste into another project setting folder. Now that we've got our input manager, we can then use this to actually detect pattern as well. Like this, in this case over here, I've got my joystick and I've got a menu. Now usually out of a joystick, you get a float value back, you get a return value that is a float number. But I'm actually using it as a bool over here for my menu and I'm detecting, am I going down or up with the joystick and it's actually acting as a button. This is the code I've put, so you're allowed to pretty much just add some stuff to your input manager and create your own patterns. Alright guys, so I hope you guys enjoy. This was the first game mechanic videos, there will be plenty more to come and I hope I'll see you in the next one. If you thought that this video was helpful with theory and such, um, please let me know in the comment, uh, leave me a like, I really appreciate that and I will see you guys in the next one.